So let's say that you got a Canvas app that you developed using SharePoint lists, and these lists have grown a lot, the number of items inside them, and now your Canvas app has become, has gotten slower and slower. Well, in this video, I will give you some tips that if you don't know about them, they will help you a lot and on how to very quickly apply them to improve the experience with your application. But before that, please hit the like, subscribe, and if you want to contact me directly, I will gladly help you out or your organization. Uh, please let me know, uh, not via LinkedIn or the comments. I use email instead. So please go to the description box in the YouTube video, uh, click into the link to my personal page, and there you will find a form that you can use to contact me, and then I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks. So here we go, we have a SharePoint list with lots of data. Actually, we go to list settings, we have 6,000 items going above the threshold of uh, 500 that you know, probably know that is the limit where things start getting clankier when you work with SharePoint lists. And we will illustrate a couple of tips as well on how to optimize, optimize staff when using this uh, very uh, <laughs> simple application to work with. Uh, SharePoint in a more optimized way. All right, let's get to it. So the first tip is just a couple of clicks away. Uh, basically, what we get, got here is a list with four columns, text column, date column, text column, instead of a choice column, I'll tell you why in a second, and then a text area column here. This list will go to list settings. Uh, when we have more than 5,000 items, uh, what's happening is that when you try to filter with your Canvas app, you won't get data after those 5,000 items because uh, Poiras is not able to get that data because there's plenty of uh, data already in the list. So what we have to do is tell um, is create indexes. What what are indexes? Well, indexes are very easy to understand. Basically, in, in any database. SharePoint list or a SQL server or whatever, what we have is that in a table, a list uh, like this or in a table in the end, same, we tell the table, hey, if I search or filter using this column, please use that index to be quicker and find things easier. That's what we are doing when we configure a, an index within any database system. So with SharePoint is not different. We go here, index columns, and here you'll see that we can uh, only create up to 20 indices. Why? Because, well, there's a limit to all um, tables in SharePoint this is 20 by design, this is technology limitations. Uh, because behind the scenes, when we create an index, we are creating a data structure behind that we don't see, it's inside SharePoint, that's going to help any service that uses a list search or filter via that column. So uh, behind the scenes, what, when you do um, a filter in Power Apps, uh, you go first to this index, the data structure, and that is going to help SharePoint give you the proper data back. And what we have to do basically is then create a new index. And these are a couple of clicks away, as I mentioned. Here, you will see all the, the columns that you can use for things. Not all columns can be used to configure a an index. And then, for example, the title column here, we just need to hit the create button. And this is going to take the creation is going to be instantaneous, let's say, but then the indexing of the column, so creating that data structure behind the scenes that's going to help you um, um, filter the column properly, uh, it's going to take a while. That, so the recommendation is create your indices as soon as you create your list or as soon as you create a column that you need, you are going to be needing an indexing, an index for. And actually, there is a limitation. When you have more than 20,000 items are in the list, you won't be able to create an index for that column. Uh, so again, the uh, recommendation would be you create your index and then you as a developer have to think about, okay, what columns do I want to filter and are going to be used for filtering? Probably not all columns. And there are also delegation limitations that we can talk about in a different video. And then uh, you have to think about the 20 column limitation and then think, okay, let's say we want to use these many columns for indexing, just configure that from the beginning. Now, another quick fix to optimize your data and your app is just delete the data that you don't need. So archive all their data. And 
uh, this may sound trivial, but it's actually a very intelligent strategy. Why? Because probably you are using this. In this case, this uh, um, list has been created with ChatGPT. I did uh, try to use Copilot, but it couldn't create me an Excel file, so I'm um, uh, quite disappointed with uh, the Copilot license. But anyway, um, when you've got plenty of data, you are probably using the list in this case, for instance, is for inspections. So you want to track with an app ins inspections for the current year, maybe, so that operators can perform the inspection with the list. And then you, the other data is, is no longer um, of use for the users of the app. Maybe it's, it's useful for reporting purposes, but not for the app. So what we do is, okay, let's get the older data in an archiving list so that we don't overload the current list or the list that's used by the app. And then if we want to um, get insights from that data, then we build a report using the archiving, uh, archival data, the archiving list, and the list that is used by the app, then it's uh, more efficient. It's loading better because we have less data and we are uh, archiving maybe with a flow, with a PowerShell script, the older data after automatically after, I don't know, maybe nine months, 12 months, whatever it is, the uh, constraint for your business case scenario. All right, now let's take a look at how to uh, optimize very quickly the formulas that you are using in your Canvas app. So we got here uh, the list basically in a gallery, the title, the status column, and this notify two. Let's get back to the list. So we have the title and the status, and the notify two column comes from a related list uh, here. So notify column for each of the status, we have uh, a notify two. So if the status is done, they notify to this person. Uh, this is what we call master data, and that's why we don't have here a choice column because we want to have more dimensionality, more information around uh, the status columns. And uh, we used a text column, which is also going to give us less problems in the long run when working with SharePoint lists. Uh, so this is specific to SharePoint, not to Dataverse. If we have choice columns, I prefer to use a master data list. And then what we do is relate uh, in, in this list, instead of just having the column here, we relate it with the ID of the specific uh, choice. And then if we want, if we need to change the title to schedule instead of uh, whatever we want to put there, then we just change it here. But then in the Canvas app, because we are using the ID to relate it to, then we will display the new, the updated name without needing to change everything in the data set or the formulas in your Canvas app. So uh, what's going on here then? Let's go back to the app. So uh, we have here these rows and probably you want to display the notify to, which is in this other list, the master data list. You will be tempted to just do a lookup to that SharePoint list and then say where the title is this item that status, then this is a person column, uh, give me the display name. What's going on here is that then for each of these rows, then for this column, you are telling Power Apps to do the following. Uh, you will say, okay, for this value, go to the SharePoint list, to the list, and get me back the display name of that person column. So for each of these rows, you are performing this operation which is going to consume networking resources, make your app slower. And the more stuff you have in here in the screen, the worse it's going to get. So instead, what we can do is uh, create a collection to handle that internal, because typically this master data information is not going to be more than 2000 records of master data. And that uh, is completely uh, manageable with a local collection, a local array in your app. So let's do that and uh, let's go to the invisible and then quickly create clear collect uh, call master data and just get the information from this list. Okay, so we go back to this, um, to this screen. Now this is loaded and let's copy this and basically modify only this part of the formula. So just by doing that, changing where we are doing the lookup from, we are doing this query, this lookup to the local collect collection in memory with a need to get it outside into SharePoint. And this way, this is going uh, to load more smoothly.
Now, the second tip that you can apply right away is with your filters. And this may be uh, may sound like a silly one, but uh, let's take a look at this search filter. So we have here stat whatever we station station. Okay. So you see with every character I, I'm typing, you see that it's automatically doing a search and you can see that in this uh, text table that is just displaying the text from this input text input uh, control. So if we uh, change a uh, character here uh, it's going to change automatically here. And with every key in your keyword that you are typing, you are also um, sending the instruction for Canvas app to uh, perform this filter. But typically we want to write a word, not just a character when filtering, right? So station, or I think there was a stat date. I think here as well, this is just random data generated by ChatGPT. So what we want to do is for the query for the filter to be delayed. So what we have to do is there is a property here called delay. And we have, we can just uh, change it to true for the control. And then if let's say that we want to uh, here stage, for example, it takes a second to load. So the control takes a second to trigger the event to tell everybody else, hey, my text has been updated. And then thus this has been changed in, in a delay manner instead of for every character doing the query, just wait a, a second and then do the search with a full word. And last, uh, patching. Patching with uh, the canvas, from the canvas apps using formulas instead of Power Automate Flow because uh, we want to do a bulk, uh, which is going to be the thing that we're going to talk about, a bulk operation with Power Automate. That's a whole different video. So let's say that we want to um, use these input control and this button to change the records that we are going to be selecting with this checkbox. So we select with the checkboxes and then we're going to change the title with the text that we will submit in here. So we, will, we wouldn't do this exactly like that, but let's uh, quickly in the unchecked uh, collect uh, call roads to update with this item. Okay. And if we click uh, what is happening is that calls to uh, let's go to here calls to update view table we have these three rows in here right so what we want we what, what we would typically do is here do a for all right and first would be call rows to update uh, and then whoops uh, we will do here patch and then the big list uh, with this record and then with the title change, right? Title, it's uh, whatever the control name is. So here basically the text, oops, boom, boom, boom. So if we do this, which is uh, completely fine, what we are doing in reality is for each of these items in this collection, perform this patch. So instead of doing that, what we want to do is perform what is called a bulk operation. So submit this new information in bulk in a batch. How can we do that? Just <clears throat> tweaking a little bit how we are performing the patch using the collection. Let's take a look at how to do this. So first let's uh, add the new title that we want to put here. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, something really not helpful at all. And let's then uh, use this collection and say first update the title and let's do this. Uh, I wouldn't do this this way. It would be in the re, re, really in the checkbox, for example. Uh, and here, what we would do is if, if one equals one is true, um, then basically a title. I just do an update. No, no, no update if. But I'm used to more using the update if. Uh, it will be here. Yeah, the text. Okay, we do that, uh, update, then we have here now uh, the new title, no more death and the fed. Okay, um, what we can do now is just in a single, in a single uh, statement, just do a patch for the big list like that, instead of doing a for, a, a for each, a, a for all. Uh, and what this is going to do is basically pick the whole array, the whole collection, and submit it to SharePoint. If we click, all right, this is done. 
quicker than just row by row because we're doing just one request instead of three or as many as we have selected. And here, here it is. All right. Okay. And the last, um, the last tip would be just use database. In this channel, I'm trying to showcasing you, showcase you how Dataverse is far superior than SharePoint as data source Power platform is built on top of Dataverse. That's already a, a good enough reason. But for any of these filtering full text search, which we don't have here in SharePoint uh, and other other things, is far superior. Uh, so, but if anyway, if you are not able to overcome the licensing costs, you are stuck with SharePoint or whatever is the reason, here are some actionable tips that I hope serve you well. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.